we are going to present a case, use case, for DevOps in practice <coughs> from airline industry. And uh, we will do this by explaining a little bit about DevOps first and then, then showing actually what are we doing in this airline project. And we will do it together with Reynold. And, uh, and uh, yeah, let's get kicking. By the way, first question, let's do this a little bit interactive. How many of you had our waffles in the nail stand? Oh, that's, that's not bad. It's not bad. It's, it's a good start. But we'll come next year and we have the waffles again. So the other ones have the opportunity also. Good. Nails at class. I think I will hand over to Rhino now. <coughs> Thank you, Janne. Welcome, welcome from my side. I'm Reinhold. Um, Thank you that you are here at such a late time. Um, I want to introduce you to, to what we do. So NEOS has its 10th anniversary this year. So you are all invited to Munich, where is our headquarter. We run data center in Munich and Singapore. We have a center of excellence in VMware in Bratislava, uh, Slovakia. We have an operations center in Bangkok, Thailand. We have a branch office in Sydney and we'll open another one in most probably Miami this year. So what we mainly do is running platforms for the industries of airline and travel, for banking sector and logistics. So these are high transactional platforms where we do managed hosting. And because of our expertise in automating the most of these processes up to continuous deployment, what we talk about today, we enable others as well to provide their cloud solutions. And we consult how to automate the most of its processes. So these are the key partnerships. There are some more, but at least a, an idea of it. <coughs> so my first question is, who had a coffee this afternoon? Who did not? Thank you. Uh, the second question is, who knows about the concept of DevOps? OK. That's quite a lot. Half, half. Almost 60% yeah. maybe, yeah. which is pretty good. Who does not? Again, the question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's good to have an overview of who is really talking about that topic. Uh, we thought it's much less. It's good to have such a number here. And uh, we want to talk about the challenge of DevOps today. We want to talk about a new concept of continuous deployment. Uh, providing you with a use case in the airline industry. And then we have a little time for questions. So what we all face to today in our IT organizations, IT operations, is that we have different silos of organizations in, within the whole organization of IT. This is all, all about. And from there, we think about ideas, technologies, new concepts, how to bring the different silos together. And this is what we talk about when we talk about continuous deployment and DevOps topics. So what we find here, talking about different silo organizations within the main IT organization, is that we have issues in communication. Even if we talk about an IT service, the definition of IT service, if you have two persons in a row, you find three or four de definitions of IT service talking to one or two people. So the second uh, problem that we fi face today in IT operations is that there is almost no integration in different layers or different uh, parts of the organization of IT. So we have a lack of communication, we have a lack of integration, and what we hope to solve is to interact and collab collaborate uh, what we can do in different ways. We can consult in 
how to process the IT in a better way, how to bring the people together uh, so that communi communication starts again. And if you ask different consultancies consulting you about how to optimize communication in, within your IT organization, uh, they have different ideas how to do it. But one concept is the DevOps, and sometimes it's really a good advice to ask a trusted advisor, meaning a third party, to bring all this together, meaning in IT organizations, bring the different departments together, but as well bring the communications uh, level together. So that sometimes a third party trusted advisor could act like a lawyer uh, who takes out the emotions of when you try to bring these IT, uh, different IT layers together. So uh, <coughs> if we talk about this use case now, I'd like to hand over to Jan again. So there you go. Thank you, Reinhold. Step over there. Um, Thanks. Good. Okay. Airline IT. Um, I have been working by myself now almost 15 years with this type of business, and it's, it's a very interesting industry and very demanding industry as well. And uh, Neos has been engaged himself already 10 years also, also in this industry. Um, let's <coughs> look at the use case, because this is really a use case which we are currently doing. Um, we started the project uh, in October last year, and we are planning to, we were just in a, in a hot phase, we are planning to uh, go production live uh, July uh, this year. All right. So, just to represent um, the challenge as well, what we have in, uh, in such cases when you're talking about the airline websites. I, th I think everyone understands how critical they are nowadays. Um, if, you, if you look at 10 years ago, the websites were more for informational, maybe already for booking purposes and so on, reservations. But nowadays, there's so many things going on in the airline websites. Um, you can book the flights. Nowadays, you also normally check in in the website. So you don't go into the airport and counter, but you actually have the porting bus with you in an e-format in your phone. Um, you have information about your flight status, changes, etc. And addition, normally there is a frequent flyer program um, still on the website, linked to it at least. Okay? So all of that, of course, makes it very, very critical and everyone expects that to be available at all times. They're also very complex ecosystems. Um, Many of them, and in this specific case, we have lots of environments. And we have, for example, two production environments, if you look at here. And why is it that this way? Because one is active, the other one is passive. And in the passive one, the changes are made. If there needs to be a new deployment for code, patching, whatever, they make the change on the passive uh, production side or environment, and swing over when that has been done. So actually you need two environments at all times. Um, the website also connects almost, not everywhere, but it connects to many entities. And you could say such a, such a website has partner and, uh, and you know, content connections to from 50 to 100 different places. So network-wise, it is also very complex to, uh, to manage. All right. So what we are introducing in this ecosystem and critical um, case for the website for an airline, it's not really magic, but it's, um, it, it is very challenging to get, get it done and the tools in place and so on in order to achieve the deployment and DevOps um, model uh, in such case. So if we look at, we could take a couple of key points from this slide. What we, what we have here <coughs> is the configuration data together with the version control. And this is, this is one of the key points uh, uh, when you are deploying 
and managing such a complex ecosystem. You need to know what kind of configurations you have in which environment and in different layers as well. Uh, and then <clears throat> you need, of course, a workflow engine, which is going to push the configuration um, through the process, automated process, to all layers, starting from the infrastructure and ending to the application layer. So basically the complete stack. And then eventually you will get the production environment. And this will really happen in, in an automated way. When you push a button, you should get a copy of any environment based on the version you have. So you can fall back a couple of versions as well and create copies of the environments if necessary for testing purposes, for new releases, and so on. The other key factor what, what we have here is that we start to talk about the human involvement and previously the operators were normally deploying the code um, in live environments. So in this case, this is of course reduced. This will happen still because you cannot just cut, cut that link, but you know the control and, and you know the versioning, we will make sure that that the actions will happen actually using the process, which will then reduce the human error factor in, in many cases. All right? Good. So let's move on. Just to summarize, greatly improved configuration management and uh, increased level of control. Um, and what we tend to say, <coughs> or what people tend to say, never change the running system. It's not really valid anymore in this case because you need to change it anyway. And uh, through such a control and deployment process, you actually have more flexibility and control to do such actions. Good. How to DevOps? I bet there are so many answers to that question, but, uh, but you know, we present our model, what we normally do with our customers. Um, and it's, once again, it's not really magic and rocket science. It's, it's, it's starting really from, from the beginning where we look at jointly with the customers. What is, what is the status currently? How does it look like? And do analysis on it. Then we decide with the customer where to focus because you can do everything at once. So you start to put priorities this is, should be done first because these are the low-hanging fruits. This is where you get the benefits from the DevOps and deployment automation. And then you execute, of course. We offer also then adjustments. So if things need to be changed, like they always do, we go all the way through. So we start from the beginning and we, we are with the customer and with the case all the way along. Good. I think we don't want to bore you longer <laughs> with the subject, but thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions now, it's a good time now or later. But now we have, I think we have still some time. Eh? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Quick question. Yujana, what was the application? The application. The, uh, the, in the, on the website itself. Oh. It's, it's, uh, in the website, there is something called Adobe um, Experience Manager, I think it's called, yeah, which is handling lots of the content. And part of the application has been coded by the customer or by the cost customer provider by themselves. Yeah. Going live, right? uh, July. July. On the automation tool side, we use, for example, Nexus, Jenkins such tools, and on the infrastructure uh, uh, structure layer, we have VMware, not, not the whole stack, but a but, uh, big part of the VMware stack. Also in, in Australia? Uh, no, <laughs> in Europe, in Europe, <laughs> in Europe, yeah. Okay. Any further questions? Okay then, thank you, Jana, thank you, Reinhold. Thank you very much. Most welcome. Thanks. Thanks.